morning, Dublin. Good morning, Inspirefest. As Anne said, I work at Dublin City University where we like to think it's a bit of an Inspirefest every day. And in particular, we like to think we're really inspiring in the Faculty of Education, where we have over 4,000 students, of whom 3,500 want to work in schools. Now, to work in a school is to put yourself at the heart of a great paradox. And that's what I'm going to talk about this morning, the great paradox of education. So if you chose the decaf option, wrong choice this morning. Right, we're, we're going straight for complexity. One of the great, uh, par the great paradox of education is that while on the one hand, it's very future focused, you talk about studying for the next phase or preparing for the next stage of education or the next job. So it's very much looking to the future, but at the same time, education is pulled backwards, fueled by a nostalgia for bygone years, by parental memories of schooling as it was in my day, and by, and by the need of schools to prepare young people to grow up, to teach them mores and rules. So in some ways, schooling also constrains and contains the people in schools. And at the heart of this paradox are our three and a half thousand students who want to go to teach. Let me introduce you to some of them. I took this photo last September on their first day. It was their first day of the four-year programme to become a primary school teacher. And I didn't intend taking the picture, I just took it on a phone. I had to do it in response to the wave of energy coming down those steps. The hope, the positivity, the relief. There wasn't an ounce of cynicism in the room. And for many of the people there on that day, it was, as one young woman said to me breathlessly afterwards, it was a dream come true. So these three and a half thousand people want, want to be teachers. They want to put themselves straight in the heart of that paradox. Now, a really important contextual factor for visitors is that in Ireland, to get into that room is highly competitive. For Irish people in the audience, you may not know that that's not the same in other countries. Uh, in lots of countries in the developed world, it's really difficult to attract people into teacher education. Not so in Ireland. Even though we do have shortages and we need more, we are completely oversubscribed. In DCU, we've just finished um, uh, interviewing 600 graduates for 60 places to become primary school teachers. And all of our post-primary education programs are up, 20, um, are up at least 25% uh, on, on last year. So we've got that growing interest in becoming teachers. And then if you look at that group, they're not just a random group of undergraduates or, or starting out. They're actually among the smartest graduates from the school system. Uh, in the top percentile of graduates want to be primary school teachers. And there's an awful lot of comment about this group, particularly about the gender balance there. Now, that's a whole other talk, um, but the discussions about the gender balance divide along two lines. There are not enough men, or my favorite one, there are too many women. Um, and in all of that, in, in, in much of that discussion, what I haven't heard is the point that I want you to remember above all else over the next couple of days, and it's this. That in all of that commentary, we rarely hear the fact that this group of people, where women are in the majority, is the most important resource we have in creating and sustaining cultures of innovation. Because their influence on children is immeasurable. Actually, it's not quite immeasurable, because when it is measured, after your parents it is your teacher who is the greatest influence on you as a child and young person. And for those of you who lie awake at night worrying about which school to send your child to, you're worrying about the wrong thing. Lie awake at night and worry about the teacher that they will have. Because the teacher that they have is actually more significant than the kind of school that they attend. So this is a really important group of people most of them will still be teaching, brace yourself, in 2050. So how we prepare them, how we send them out into that great paradox of education is really important. 
And we've been doing a lot of thinking about that in DCU since we formed our first faculty of education, not even, not even two years ago. How do you prepare teachers to stand on that great bridge of paradox? Well, one of the first things we've come to realize is that knowledge and skills, I have to stop now because there's a clock somewhere. This is now what happens when you miss the, oh, I see it. How do you, uh, how do you, how do you prepare teachers to stand on the bridge of paradox? You need, yeah, they need skills and knowledge. We take that as given and they are important, but they're not enough. You need a passion for teaching, but that's not enough. Because very often the passion for teaching is born out of how you were taught. You bring that passion out of a model of what teaching was like in the past, and it's rarely informed by what teaching was like, is going to be like in the future. You need knowledge and skills, you need a passion, but we've started to think that there are other things we need these people to have. We have a long list, but so far it includes that we need these people to be innovators and adventurers and seekers. We need them to be thinkers, reflectors, champions for social justice. We need them to be activists. We need them to be designers, testers, explorers, transformers, makers, shakers, and breakers. We want to prepare teachers to model what we need children to become in the future. And that's really challenging for teacher education programs because most of this crew came directly to us from school. And if we don't do anything about it, they will move directly from one classroom to the next. They will move from that side of the classroom from those seats to this stage. And so in a little shaking and breaking of our own at DCU, working in partnership with some people who are in the room here, we're trying to provide our students with a wider horizon. As we speak here today, a number of our graduates who will start work in September, in fact, they just got their exam results yesterday, um, and they'll take up their first jobs in September with some of you. They're now working with you this summer in tech companies, in consulting, with startups, in social enterprises, with NGOs, with project teams, uh, right, across, uh, right across enterprise in an attempt to learn other ways to disco discover, other ways to innovate, and some of the knowledge and skills we can never give them in university. And we hope that when they move into school in September, they will move with a greater sense of the paradox, with a wider and broader horizon. It's a new departure for teacher education. It's never been done before, certainly in Ireland, and we are getting global interest in this scheme that gives teachers those wider horizons and, and new skills. The early evidence from the initial evaluations is extremely positive, not just from the participants, but also from the, the companies and projects where they were placed. And our hope is that that young woman who said, my dream, it's my dream come true, that she will leave DCU with wider and bigger dreams because she will be teaching for the next 30 years. We're growing that intern program, by the way, see me after class if you're interested, or at the DCU, uh, at the DCU stand that's here. The second paragraphs I want, paradox I want to talk to really quickly is the one about where we think about STEM education. Because we tend to focus on older children and, uh, and young people, over 12s and 14s, and that's right because we want more of those people to move into STEM. But we miss the fact that the critical stage for where your dispositions towards STEM are formed are in early years and in the world of play. Now, I have to get this said, otherwise my final point won't work. Play is where innovation is born. Stephen Johnson, in his book Wonderland, spoke about the role of play in innovation. And he said, because play confounds expectations, play is where innovation is born. A real paradox of education is that there is a pushback against play. I'm on the board of Early Childhood Ireland. 
those who provide early years settings for children say that there is a real challenge in ensuring that they can sustain play because parents, fueled by nostalgia, are putting pressure on early year settings and on the first two years of primary education to play less and learn more, to spend more time with numbers and letters, more time in silence, more time sitting down than in the sand pit and in the water and with the plastic and with all those things that help you become playful because play is the key to innovation. We're trying in DCU to help our teacher educators play more. It's a real challenge. Even teachers in primary school report that the more you try and introduce play, the more pushback you get that it is not real learning. If it is not real learning, then I have no idea where real learning happens. And it means that when we think about STEM, please include the under sixes, the early years, our very young children, because if we wait until they are 15, all the playfulness has been sucked out of them by nostalgia for how schooling is and want to be. In Spirefest, I wish you two great play-filled years. Remember the teachers whose influence is immeasurable. Remember that in the early years, play is the key to innovation. Keep play alive. Have two great play-filled days and thank you for listening.